Good morning, and welcome. We are pleased that you are here this morning to worship, to hum. I still miss singing. How many miss singing? Yeah, that's a unanimous, that's a unanimous reality. But to hum, to allow Tom and Dave Carew to sing the words that we're not going to sing. I, I admit, I have to confess, last week I was so drawn into one of the songs that I began to sing. You may find yourself doing that as well. I just encourage you to try to remember and to hum along. Um, Luke is uh, the one who catches me uh, because he edits the audio uh, and the video and my mic, even when it's muted, is on for him. And so when he listens afterwards, he knows. So I have no escape. I just have to be honest. Sometimes the Spirit moves us in strong ways and we can feel the response we want to make. I just invite you to do that in a way uh, that honors our worship and honors the safety of each other this morning. Amen? Amen. We had some uh, shifts this week as uh, we put worship together. And I, I want to uh, introduce to you to my right and to your left, Ivan Rockhot. I think I believe I got that. Uh, Ivan is, I believe, a student at Andrews, a, a compatriot with Gabriel, and they're going to be sharing some music today. Tom Rockhill has graciously stepped in for uh, Noah, who is under the weather suddenly this morning and uh, not able to be here. And so we, we thank you for being here and part of the leadership of our worship today. Next Sunday, uh, we will be doing communion, or at least I'm anticipating it. Uh, we have communion sets that are self-contained, meaning that the wafer and the cup are all hermetically sealed in one package. And uh, we ordered those some time ago. I have to tell you, they're not my favorite. Uh, actually, if I was honest, I would say I loathe them. However, in our time today, uh, this time, to be able to have an important part of our worship uh, to celebrate communion, they suddenly have a place uh, for us. We'll work through the details on how we're going to do that to be able to be socially distanced and, and hopefully to provide a service that has spiritual impact as well. I just wanted you to be aware that we're working on that for the first Sunday uh, in July. I invite us now uh, to listen and allow Gabriel and Ivan to set our tone of worship.
our opening hymn this morning, Forward Through the Ages. In the second verse, I want to direct your attention to these words. The kingdom grows wider in the reign of love and light. We have gifts of differing measure, gifts of differing purpose. What pulls those together for us this morning is our focus of worship. I invite you, to, if you choose, to stand as we honor and celebrate God's presence in worship. you to remain standing for the affirmation of faith. Would you join me? Jesus Christ is the, the image, image of the, of the invisible, invisible God, God, the firstborn, firstborn of, of all creation. creation. For in Born him all, all things, things in heaven and on earth were created, created. Things, things visible and, and invisible, invisible, whether, whether thrones, thrones or dominions or rulers or, rulers or powers. powers. All, All things, things have, have been created, created through, him through him and for, and for him. him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from among the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him... All, All the fullness, fullness of God, God was, was pleased, pleased to dwell, and, and through, through him, him 
God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. You may be seated. Sometimes there are realities around us that we do not see and, and do not recognize. This morning as we come to prayer and as we focus on that which God is doing that we may, may not perceive or see, what good, what beauty is God moving and doing in the midst of this time? A time of pandemic, a time of racial tension around the world, a time of wrestling between individual rights and community good. Those realities can distract us from the hand and the presence of God moving among us. What will God speak into your heart this morning about something good and beautiful? Lord, this morning, it is into your presence we bring ourselves. It is into your hands that we place our lives. It is into your future we trust. Here this morning, our hearts. Listen to the thoughts of our minds. Sense the flow of energy within our bodies. And move to the place, Lord God, where we have need, each of us. For it is marvelous how you are able to work with such different realities and reactions in we human beings. You hear us. You know us. You know us more than just simply a name. You know us in the essence of our hearts and souls. You've known us even before we were born. Encourage us now, Lord God, to not only speak to you, especially to listen and to hear you. Lord Jesus, help us to hear beyond the noise of the current time. Help us to find our center and our balance and our harmony in the midst of these times, not in the external circumstances around us, but solely in the love, your steadfast love, which has been from everlasting to everlasting. While we may not sense in every moment the clarity we desire, we can trust 
the rock-solid presence and ongoing goodness of your desire for us and for all of creation. Lord, help us. Help us to see, help us to hear what we are missing. What unrecognized reality were we to discover it through the power that you bring would transform, would resurrect, would reconcile not just ourselves to you but ourselves to each other. Lord, in these moments, help us to hear you, see you, and sense you. This morning we lift to you those in our family, both close and extended around the United States and world. The prayers for healing. The prayers for presence in the midst of loss and grief. The prayers for strength when there is weakness. The prayers for humility where there is arrogance. Heal us in mind and in body and spirit we ask today. So that we might be your representation of heaven on earth as your love works in and through us. We ask these things today saying together the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are children of God. We are led and watched over tenderly by our Creator, and we are brothers and sisters to one another. A hymn has a verse that says, Who serves my God as his child is surely kin to me. These are words relevant for our time. It is a lesson to remember and even more important to embody. Please note the following statement before the prayer of dedication. We thank you for your continued generosity in giving to the ministry and vision of Jesus Christ through the work and efforts of our people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to learn to love and serve you as your children, and to love and serve our neighbors as our brothers and sisters. We give these gifts as token of our love. Bless them, we pray, to the service of your kingdom. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen.
Thank you, Tom and Dave and Gabriel. Reading this morning from 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> these words. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everyone else did it. It's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence to seek, to understand as well as we can. For instance, by using our heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus, be cursed. Nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is master without the insight of the Holy Spirit. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they are all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds 
of people. The variety is wonderful, wise, counsel, clear, understanding, simple, trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between the spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All of these gifts have a common origin, but they are all handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God. And He decides what and when and who. May the blessing of God's Word be upon you. Amen. May it work in you this week as well as throughout this time of worship together. One of the things that I have noticed is that it's much more difficult now to read you all. You are hiding. I can see eyes, but the rest of the face is masked. Someone shared with me this week that uh, they said, Pastor Rick, we think, you know, you're, you're far enough away from the congregation. Surely it would, be, it would be safe enough for you to take your mask off. And their comment was that it was hard to hear the subtext that comes in my facial expressions that communicates probably as much as the verbal words. You can't tell now whether I'm sticking my tongue out at you <laughs> or whether I'm smiling. You might be able to tell up here if it's the difference between frustrated, angry, and, and joyful, and pleased, and pleasant, but this time is teaching us some things, yes? I've noticed that, that I work harder at eye contact when I'm talking with someone with a mask on. How about you? It kind of forces it, actually. These are things we all knew before, yes. But in some respect, because they were just present around us, it was almost as if they didn't e exist, as if we didn't really notice or, or pay attention to them. I want to talk today in the realm of gifts, in the realm of the spiritual world, about unrecognized connections. So I want you for a moment, if you need to close your eyes to do this, close your eyes. If you can do it with your eyes open, leave them open. Uh, just don't go to sleep. Uh, either way, please. But rather, I want you to imagine yourself in a busy subway station. And when I say busy, I'm, I'm thinking like every hour there's about 34,000 people moving in and out of that station. So we're not talking a small town here. We're talking a large city with lots of people. So I want you to imagine whatever subway station you want to imagine and the crowd and people moving. You see it? Feel it? Now I want you to know that you have a task. And as you are in the midst of that flow of people, your task is kind of one of, of engineering. You need to lower the cost of electricity in that subway station. How can you do it? Perhaps what comes to your mind is that somehow up on the surface, solar arrays could be placed feeding electricity into the lighting in the subway station. Perhaps you, you notice as you look up at the ceiling at the lighting that the, the bulbs or the, the stuff that's being used is not necessarily LED. And so you think, well, we could change that. We could change the lighting fixtures themselves. And you notice that it's hot and the ventilation doesn't seem to work as well, but you're, you're thinking about how can you improve the efficiency of the ventilation, both to keep people at least comfortable while they're moving through, but at the same time, lowering the cost of the electricity to that. 
Have you had any breakthroughs? Anything that we should be sharing with New York City or London or any of those places? No? What about your walking? What about 34,000 people an hour walking? Could that make a difference? Let's watch. Did you all think of that? Huh? Is that stunning? Now, I would guess that you had an awareness that when you walk that there's energy happening, yes? But did you know that when you're walking, you're wasting energy? I'm wasting energy right here. <laughs> Every footstep transmits kinetic energy into a floor that absorbs it and does nothing with it. And they've been able to, by the way, they're working on roads so that our vehicles, that'll take a leap in technology of, of being able to take that kind of pounding, but they're working, they're working to take what is naturally what we do. And we didn't see it, did we? We didn't recognize it. That there was a connection between all of us. Why? Just think if we had in our hallways here in the church what that would mean, or here in the aisles in the sanctuary. That every time that we were in the building and we were walking through it, that we would be creating energy, connecting our energy together. Notice that it's not just the single person, but it's the crowd together, and that something unites that energy that makes it worthwhile. Yes? It's an unrecognized connection. When I came across this as I was getting ready for this, I was like, holy mackerel, I didn't even think of that. Why not? So I wonder, I wonder in our spiritual world what unrecognized connections exist for you and me? What is it that we're processing through day to day in life today and making assumptions that there's nothing else out there that would shift or transform or resurrect or reconcile life in a more powerful way because we just don't recognize and see the connection at this point? It's a human condition. Because quite frankly, if all of us have been that smart, so to speak, well, it's not about smarts, it's about seeing. It's about getting the connections and recognizing that there's a way to harness and to unite and to pull together. If we put this in a spiritual situation, if we put this in a spiritual context, my friends, then we go to Paul and the people of Corinth. And you may or you may not remember that the, the story of Corinth is kind of one of struggle and battle within that Christian church as they worked out what it meant to be followers of Christ, both as individuals and as a community of people. And as Paul's working with them, they're not seeing the connections that exist among their spiritual gifts. They're still living in a world in which they are individuals who've been gifted in a particular way. A spiritual gift of healing, a spiritual gift of compassion, a spiritual gift of teaching, of proclamation. And each one of them seeing that that gift 
is significant and important in believing that there is a hierarchy of gifts, not a dependency of gifts. While I was playing around with this on Thursday, I thought a game show would be an appropriate kind of illustration here. So you, can you imagine the announcer saying, Bob, not picking on you, Bob, by the way. Bob, you have won the publisher clearing house spiritual sweepstakes, the gift of healing. Bob, where are you going to go and where are you going to use it? And the people who are going to swarm to you and fawn all over you. Suzette, you have won compassion. Uh, uh, sorry, but you're going to hurt with everybody else's pain. And you're going to carry the world on your shoulders. And you're going to be burdened. I am so sorry that that that's the door that you opened. Now back to Bob. <laughs> Bob, you can bring healing, you can bring beauty, you can bring life to the world. And my friends, when you put it in that context, it just seems wrong, doesn't it? It just seems off. The reality, the reality is that all of those gifts have a common source. All of those gifts have a common purpose. And what the Corinthians didn't recognize, what they didn't see, was that it was the same Spirit that was giving them life. It's interesting to me that, that Paul points out the, the misconnection that they have, and he, he talks about the variety of gifts, but he spends more time emphasizing the unity that comes to those gifts through the power that has given and that directs and that provides them. That, my friends, was the unrecognized connection. When we are unable or when we cease to see The power that pulls us together and directs our efforts, then we become one and scattered and fighting on our own. It becomes a question of hierarchy of who determines and who, who controls and, and who powers rather than a dependency where those gifts are being worked together for the good of a kingdom that is God's kingdom. It makes all the difference in the world. When I talk to us about great chemistry together, it's in part that chemistry comes because we're willing to subordinate ourselves to each other and to the body of Christ. Yes? You're silent this morning. It comes when we recognize that we together are following the Spirit of God, not just simply as individuals, but as a body, a whole. When heaven becomes real on earth, and it happens in the midst of individual actions, but it happens in the midst of a community who is making that real. And that would be what God calls us to. For Paul, in the situation at Corinth. He wants them to recognize that each one of those gifts, some of them more public, yes, some of them more private, some of them more uh, perhaps recognized, and some of them more hidden, but all of those are necessary for people to be the church and for the church to fulfill its purposes. As we live today, in the midst of this time, I wonder, 
I wonder what connections of the spirit world we could be missing. The places perhaps where, where we are struggling. The places where we could envision and live into a world that is closer to the kingdom and heaven than we've ever before been in the past. I wonder if as humanity, not just simply our congregation here, but I wonder if humanity, if, if we're going to be able to set aside defensive responses that we have when we sense challenge and difference, whether, whether we're going to be able to hear the Spirit of God that is at work, not to maintain a status quo, but to bring the kingdom of God in its full richness. A recognizing that human beings around the world, regardless of ethnicity, are part of God's kingdom. Amen? Non-obvious relationships. When the butterfly flaps its wings somewhere, the tsunami happens in another part of the world. When the Sahara Desert burps, what happened to the desert southwest in Florida? The haze, the sand. We sometimes think, my friends, that our actions end someplace in the personal space a few feet from us, yes? But the reality is that those actions carry ripples across the world. This week, a firefighter in, in New York was reunited with a nurse from Virginia. He had saved her as a four-year-old in a fire in New York City. And almost 40 years later, 37 years later, she comes back to New York City. You know why she went back to New York City? She went back as a nurse to be in the midst of the trenches of COVID-19. Do you think there might be a relationship between knowing you were saved by someone who risked their life that you would pay it forward now by risking yours. Amen? Amen. Paul sees the power potential that's being wasted. Just like our steps in the building today in one sense are going to be wasted because this kinetic energy is just going to dissipate in the carpet and the wood and the subflooring. But it could literally, together with you, bring energy and power and light, cooling in the summer, heat in the winter. The same way that our steps together as the body of Christ need not be wasted. Were we to see that it's different gifts the same spirit, a variety of service, the same Lord, the opportunity of gifting, the same God. A challenge I have for you this week, as you do move about in public and you're, you're masked so they can't see your expression, right? I want you to look at the people that are ahead of you and behind you, six foot. Right? Yeah. And I want you to think about what energy do they have? What potential energy do they have for the kingdom? What energy do I bring to this moment? What opportunity of sharing might connect that energy together? Amen? 
and amen. I invite you to stand this morning as we close both hearing and humming. pray that these words this morning in the midst of tumult, in the midst of life disruption, in the midst of change that I don't know of any of us who really likes, causes us to realize that there are connections God is making, asking, calling, inviting us expecting us in trust to discover the unrecognized connections and when they connect we blossom amen amen may you go in peace and strength god bless